Hello and welcome to the Walk Around podcast. Our goal is to share with you the insights, the skills, the processes, and the leaders that are influencing the retail automotive landscape today. I'm one of your hosts, Danny Vendrell, and as always, joined by Nick Funch. How's it going, Nick? It's great, Danny. I'm super excited about our guest today. Yes, for sure. Our guest is Eduardo Briseño. He is the co-founder and CEO of Mindset Works. Um, it's a pioneer in growth mindset development services and programs. He co-founded it in 2007 um, and since then has served and influenced thousands of organizations in their advancement of learning-oriented cultures and systems. So let's take a walk around with Eduardo. Eduardo, welcome. Thanks, Danny. Great to be here. Um, just to kind of kick it off, I think, you know, growth mindset, it's, it's maybe a little bit of a buzzword. It's something that I think we see a lot, but it's so deep and it's so important. For the listeners that maybe haven't heard that before or haven't taken the time to really research it and understand the benefits, could you give us just a little bit of an overview? Sure. So a growth mindset is a perspective about the nature of human beings, whether it is how we see ourselves or how we see other people. And it is whether we see ourselves as set the way we are, static, unable to change, or as malleable, as changeable, as able to change. And that kind of very deep core belief and, and how we view people affects us very much in terms of what we perceive and how we behave. And it can vary a lot. Like we can see some people as set the way they are and we can see ourselves as malleable and, and able to change and vice versa. Or we might see listening as something that some people are great at and other people are not. Uh, or empathy, while at the same time, we might see management or leadership as something that is developed rather than something that people are either naturals at or not. So whatever different abilities we might see as either fixed or malleable, uh, the opposite of a, of a growth mindset is a fixed mindset. So we might say, you know, I, I have a fixed mindset about creativity. I think that some people are creative and others are not, and nobody can develop their creativity further. So that's a, a fixed mindset about creativity. And a growth mindset about creativity would be whatever my skill level is right now, whether it's low or high, I can get even better, right? And that's how Olympic gold medalists think. They think even they are the best in the world, they can continue to get even better. And so they wake up the next day, you know, to work to get better. And when we think of ourselves as malleable and able to improve and change, then we are uh, taking actions to improve. We're seeking feedback. We are experimenting. We are kind of challenging ourselves and making mistakes and observing those mistakes and learning from those mistakes. Um, and that leads us to, to improve and to achieve higher performance. It also has other benefits, like it, we can better understand other people and develop more positive relationships with them. It can lead to better well-being because when we feel that we can't change, and the world is changing quickly, we might feel like we're being left behind or that our skills are going to become irrelevant and we're going to not be able to get a job. And, and that's very stressful. Uh, so, so a growth mindset can also lead to well-being and happiness and less stress, lower depression uh, as we navigate a, a complex and fast-changing world. So, <clears throat> Edward, thank you. I think it, that covers it at a super... Um, at, at enough level, certainly a, a guy like myself can understand it. But it's easy, I think, to get stuck in that fixed mindset. Um, it's hard to kind of stay focused on the the growth mindset or, or kind of look through that lens. How, how do you kind of approach, how do you kind of structure your day or, or what are some strategies potentially you have to kind of pivot or recognize kind of when you're in that moment and, and kind of pivoting away from it? Great. Well, a daily habit that I really value and uh, is, is, the, is the daily habit that I most value is uh, my morning habit. It's the thing that I do when I first wake up in the morning. And I, so the, I, the most important thing I do every day is what I do then because um, I do it every day. Every day I wake up. So I, it's the same cue every day that can trigger the behavior. And it's something that 
the world hasn't distracted me then. Uh, you know, there hasn't been news, there hasn't been emails. And so I don't get derailed. And so I want to make sure that every day and the morning, I do the most important thing. And I do several things, right, at that time. Uh, the first thing that I do when I decide to wake up is I express gratitude for the things that I deem to be most important, uh, which are, you know, life, health, uh, love, and peace. And those things are things that are, um, I think kind of glass half full, like for example, in my health, like I have a knee that I have trouble with and it hurts, like it hurts all day, every day. And if I didn't express gratitude for all the health that I do have, then like I would be paying attention to my pain, right? And it would be making me more miserable than if I also pay attention to all the things that I can be grateful for in, in, in my health or um, in how much conflict and hate there's in the world, like all that stuff is coming to me in the news every day. So I need, I want to pay attention to all the peace and love there's in the world, um, which just for my emotional sanity and to, uh, to see the good that's there that I think at the end of the day is a lot greater than kind of the, the, the hate. So that's an example of something that I do every day that changes the way I feel every day, which means that it changes the way I feel my whole life. So it has a huge impact on my life. So I do different things after that. I meditate. I, um, I, I, I drink smoothies that are kind of vegetables and fruit smoothies, which is important to me. And then at the end, and this is to answer your question in a long winded way, uh, when I get to my computer, eventually the first thing I do when I open the computer before I Get, let the external world in, right? Before I check email, before I check news, I open up a document that has reminders to myself. Uh, and some of those things are kind of the most important things that I want to be working on, like strategic uh, priorities that I want to be working on to remind myself of what those things are. But a really important part of that is what am I working to change in myself? And there's always something that I'm working to change in myself, a new habit um, that I want to uh, that I want to adopt or cultivate or something that I want to work to improve. And, and so that what's important, I call that a STEM habit, which is a, a stable habit that allows other habits to form and it allows us to change ourselves throughout our lives. Uh, and so my, my question uh, for the listeners would be, do you have a STEM habit? Do you have something that you always do that allows you to always change? Uh, and because once we become, once we make that habit automatic and effortless, I don't have to, it, it doesn't take me any effort to open up this document because I do it on a daily basis. I do it automatically. Uh, and so then it becomes effortless to remind myself on what it is that I want to be working on, what, what it is that I want to be improving. Um, and that's a really, you know, key way for me to continue to improve and develop myself throughout life. So when you say open up your computer, does that mean your personal device too? I mean, that, for me, it's so difficult. The first thing I do when I wake up is all of a sudden I'm in my email, I'm checking performance mm -hmm. reports from the day before. Right. Are you shying away from all of that as well? I am. I don't, I don't actually, I, 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 I try and, and some days there's something really urgent going on. So I do, I do like check my email or something before I finish this routine, but most days, and what I try to do is I don't let the external world in before I have finished this routine so that I can live my life proactively rather than reactively. Um, uh, so yes, uh, the answer is I don't let, uh, I don't go to my phone uh, until I have finished this routine. And I also like similarly, I, I have other rules like I don't check my email more than once an hour. Like if I have checked, if I've checked it in the last hour, I, I stay away from it. Um, unless, uh, there's something urgent that I really need to be, you know, checking, uh, that, that is important. But I try to just either check my email or the external world only a couple of times a day rather than throughout the day, uh, so that I can focus deeply on things rather than be jumping from thing to thing. Uh, Danny, I, I'm, I can already tell you now, Eduardo, you don't know this, but at the end, we kind of take takeaways. And I love that takeaway around not letting the external world in until you kind of get your internal day, just day, think about it in order. Um, and it kind of starts with yourself and, and kind of setting that stage. So I jumped the gun there. But um, anyways, I, I love that. I think it's, <laughs> it's sage advice for 
for every everyone listening. Um, oh cool. yeah, I mean for me it's really important because if if I can live each how I start my day really uh, impacts how I live each day, what I do each day. And that means that it impacts my whole life because life is just a collection of days. So this habit allows me, I feel, to live life proactively rather than reactively. So I think it's really important too. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I love that. That's awesome. So <clears throat> one of the things that I just took a note on that you said was, you know, growth mindset is something that it, it could apply to lots of different areas of your life. So you may have kind of a growth mindset about a certain area of your life or a certain area of your job and potentially a fixed mindset on another area. So I guess I'm kind of putting myself in the audience's shoes. Maybe I'm, I'm a dealer um, or I'm a salesperson and, and maybe I have a fixed mindset about a certain part of my job. What's kind of like the first step in the right direction for someone that maybe they, they identify, okay, this is a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. And what's the first step? Yeah. So, um, great question. And, and we all experience fixed mindsets some of the time. That is part of being human. And our mindset also shifts. Uh, it, it can be varied by what ability it is, but we can also shift. Sometimes we might see leadership as something that can be developed. And sometimes we might see this person as a natural leader uh, and, and, and our mindset can change. Uh, so, I think a step number one is to develop self-awareness, right? To identify what things or what people do I tend to see in a fixed way? And how is that affecting me? Um, because when we think about that, uh, we realize that some of our thoughts are creating self-fulfilling prophecies, right? Like if, if somebody is reporting to us and we see them as unable to change and improve, we might not give them constructive feedback because we don't really believe that they can change. So why would we put in the thought of how, you know, what does this person need in order to improve and what can I do to better support them? And so then our fixed mindset about them creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. And the same thing with us, right? If I, if I feel that um, I, I can't really connect with a customer or, or do great storytelling and I will never be able to get better at that. I'm not going to work to get better at that. So I won't get better at it. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, so self-awareness is really important. And that part, way to do that is, uh, first to reflect and try to uncover what abilities or people we might see as fixed. And that is something that we might, if we reflect, we might uncover some things and over time we'll uncover more things that the things that we assumed were not even abilities, right? We might think that being extroverted is not even an ability, something that, you know, is a, is a quality that people have a trait. And then we'll say, well, is it an ability or not ability? And can people become more extroverted and can people become more introverted and can, can they become more reflected? Um, and, and so over time we will uncover more if we reflect. And then the next level of self-awareness is being able to catch ourselves when we are in a fixed mindset. So, you know, if I'm going about my day and all of a sudden I realize, oh, I'm thinking of this person as set the way they are, or I'm thinking about myself as something that I can't improve in this area. And if we can catch ourselves real time, um, then we, we can question our, our thinking and say, is this really working for me? And is this really how I want to think? Right. And we can pause and then we can change our self talk and change our thinking, but we can't do that if we don't become self aware. So self awareness is number one. And, and, and to work on that real time self awareness, one way to do that is if you have a STEM habit, you can remind yourself every morning that this is something you want to work on, right? I want to catch myself when I'm in a fixed mindset. And that's the one thing that you're working on for a month or two until you become better at it. And once you become better at it, then you can work on something else. You know, the other, uh, the, just one little thing you mentioned in there that I really um, latched onto was kind of the importance of self-talk. And like, you know, if it's, I think about you, if you believe you can, or if you believe you can't, you're right kind of thing. Um, and monitoring kind of what you're telling yourself will help set that trajectory. Absolutely. So it's amazing. But yeah, pivoting a little bit, uh, Eduardo, you know, um, for those of you that don't know, Eduardo has had a number of TED Talks. And, you know, one of them, I think, I don't think you did speak about, um, 
how to get better at kind of the things you you care about. And there were kind of two zones you you spoke about. Um, do you mind just sharing us a little bit about the learning zone and performance zone and, and how to kind of understand where you are within something and pivot to the other? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sometimes when we believe we can't improve, when we're in a fixed mindset, sometimes the reason is that we actually don't know, we don't have a good understanding of how to improve because the way to improve is different than the way to perform and to execute. And often we are going to work every day, working really hard to execute, to perform because with the best intentions. And we might think that that is also the way to improve, but actually the performance behaviors are different than improvement behaviors. Uh, and so uh, the performance zone is when we are doing something as best as we know how, working really hard, trying to minimize mistakes. Uh, so we are focused on what we're good at. We're focused on what we're comfortable with and just working really hard and getting it done. Um, and that's different from the learning zone, which is what leads to improvement, which is when we our goal is to improve. And the way we go about doing that is we try to do things we haven't done before. We try to do things that may or may not work. We're experimenting. And we if we're experimenting with things we haven't done before, we can't expect to do them flawlessly, right? We're going to do things that don't work. We're going to observe what works, what doesn't work we're going to adjust accordingly and iterate and that is the way that that we improve over time and if we just try to work hard at execution at trying to minimize mistakes as much as possible we stagnate but that is the way to minimize to maximize short-term performance like if you tell me you know we're we're in the dealers dealership and it's the end of the month it's the last week and we our goal is to sell as much as possible this week, right? And so the way to sell as much as possible this week is to be in the performance zone all the time. Just you do what you know works, you know, don't take any risks, don't try new things. Uh, and that's fine to do sometimes if, if you're clear about what you're doing, right? And that the fact that that's not gonna lead to improvement, but the, then question and ask yourself, are there is am I engaging regularly in the learning zone in some way, either as an individual or as a team or both? Uh, and what does that look like for me? And that is different than just showing up and trying to sell as much as possible. I love that. Yeah, that's, yeah I love the fact that hey, when 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 you really have deadlines, whether it's performance goals or whatever, you got to get in that performance zone and kind of know what works. And then, but you also got to find time. And I think be diligent about finding time um, in the in that learning zone. Yeah, yeah so sometimes. Think, sorry, uh, Danny, go for it. No, 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 please, please. After you, I, I was just going to say that uh, to understand these ideas uh, is helpful to separate them, and and sometimes it's helpful to s- separate the times. Right? Like, I mean, for example, if if we're playing a sport and we are at an important match at a final, uh, we're going to do the things we know how to do best. We're going to try to minimize mistakes. Um, and if we're having trouble with a particular move, we're going to avoid that move. Uh, but then after the, so we're in the performance zone because that match is really important. We want to win it. But after the match, we're going to say, Hey coach, you know, I was having trouble with this move in the game. So I try to avoid it. Now let's focus on that. Let's try to do that move and let's try to figure out what I'm doing wrong, what I can adjust. So that's a very different activity and a different area of focus. And that is the learning zone and that is dedicated learning zone where I'm going to say for the next hour, I'm going to work on improvement, not on performance. And so to you can separate those two things like that in terms of time. But as you become better at, at, at understanding those two things, you can also bring them together. Right. And so you can as you perform in your job, you can do it in a way that you're experimenting, you're trying new things in a way that still leads to a sufficient performance so that you're getting the job done, but you're also generating new information, paying attention to the things that surprise you, asking questions uh, so that you are performing, but also generating useful information to improve as you perform. But the key is that in order to improve, we need to be deliberate about improvement. Uh, if we just work to execute and minimize mistakes all the time, we stagnate. Yeah. So here's, here's my thought, just as everything you were saying, and I love it. I, I think it's, it's, it's so true. Um, if, if you're listening to this podcast and you are a people manager or a leader in the store, you should be like pulling your car over and like taking notes because there's just so much to unpack there. And, and so it kind of begs the question for me, one of the notes I took was just performance is different than improvement. How could leaders 
instill kind of the values that you're talking about or instill some practical application in, in our kind of business where a lot of the times it is about the number, right? It, it's about kind of hitting a specific quota. How can we just take a step back and make sure that we're, we're cognizant of this um, approach? Mm-hmm. So here, here are a couple of ideas. One is, and this is sometimes something that, that we, we need a little of help to come to understand, which is that regularly engaging in the learning zone leads to higher performance over time, over the long term, right? So if you care about performance and you care about the numbers in the long term, then figuring out a way to regularly engage in the learning zone is the way to increase the numbers and to increase the performance over time. Only if we are focused on like the short, the very short term, then is the performance op- for performance zone optimal. Uh, so I think reflecting on that as a leader, um, w- and I, I'm, so I'll share a few different strategies. If, if you, are finding some of these ideas helpful and you want to expose these ideas to your colleagues and the people in your team, uh, one thing that you can do is uh, sh- share some of some articles or videos like those TED Talks that Nick talked about uh, with your team and say, hey, you know, watch this 10 minute video or these couple of things um, and then let's come to a meeting and let's talk about did these things resonate? Um, do we want to do more of that? Do we want to promote a growth mindset here? Do we want to promote learning zone? Uh, did it resonate or not? So that you're giving people space to, to think about it, to voice their opinion and to be part of the process of what does this mean for us and how can we take action? All right. Rather than then imposing things top down and saying, here's what we're going to do. Um, so that's, that's one suggestion, uh, in terms of, uh, other kind of activities that the team could decide to do, right? One is you could each, you could have each person ideally starting with a leader, uh, identify what they want to try to, to work to improve and sharing that with the team and sharing how other people can support your growth. So the leader can say, Hey, I want to get better at X. And so here's how each of you can give me feedback and information along the way for me to get better at that. Right. And Jenny, now you go like, and so they all share. Um, and so that we are saying we want to get better. Here's the specific thing that I want to get better at. And here's how we can collaborate and how we can learn together on this. Um, so that's, that's one example. Uh, another example is you could have it in part of your regular meetings. You could, you could carve out, you know, 10 minutes a week or, 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 or something for one person to share something they've tried and what they learned from it. Right. So, hey, here or a strategy that they find to be really helpful. Here's something that I'm doing with customers and here's what I'm noticing. And 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 then maybe ideally have a conversation. What do other people think about this and have people try it? You know, similar things or different things. And so that you're having learning oriented conversations, sharing what you're trying, what's working, what's not working and, and learning with each other. Uh, another thing you can do is just uh, having systems for experimentation. Like, you know, when this uh, customer walks into the showroom, you know, how are we greeting them? How are we, um, how are we approaching that sale? And are there different approaches we want to test? And do we want to kind of track those experiments and see what, what approaches tend to work better than others? So, uh, uh, or it could be, um, finding outside resources like this podcast, right? Of like, you know, let's, call, let's, let's share with each other things we read or listened to that we think might be helpful to us and just have some way to share these, these things with each other so that we can learn from what's out there. Um, but, but I think the key is uh, identify a deliberate way to improve that will work for us and talk about it and put it in place. So, Danny, I don't know if you caught that, but on kind of the um, second strategy that was mentioned, Eduardo spoke about the leader going first and the leader saying, here's what I'm working on versus when you reverse that, um, you you may not get the truth. I don't know the truth, but you may not get as people that are open about what their opportunities are. But when the leader demonstrates that vulnerability first, it kind of opens the doors for the team to then say, Hey, well, yeah, I agree. You know, um, if he's going to work on that or she's going to work on that, then I should probably be working on something too. And I love kind of leading by example, um, can open the doors, but Eduardo, I'd like to just kind of pivot, uh, 
a little bit and talk about uh, or get your perspective, I think, on kind of the value in um, in seeking out diverse perspectives and and um, and how important it is or if it's important to kind of um, get the diverse perspectives just in kind of day-to-day decision-making. And, and I'd love to get your thoughts on that. Sure. Sounds good. And, and uh, to your earlier point, Nick, uh, just to comment a little bit on, on the leader as a model. Sometimes when we get promoted or we get to leadership positions, we feel, and other people might feel that we need to have all the answers and that we need to be knowers, right? Cause now we've been promoted. We need to be the people who know. And when, when, and, and there are, are a lot of cases where, then we see the value of learning and improvement. So we might talk about it and encourage other people to do that, but we feel pressure to portray ourselves as know-it-alls. Um, and we might even be working on learning behaviors behind curtains, right? When in our commute back home or at home and other people don't see us asking for feedback and talking about our mistakes or what we're learning along the way. And so when when we say one thing that we value learning, but we don't show it, our actions speak louder than our words. And so if if the leader is a person that people most look up, look up to, is the people most emulate. And so we want to be visibly showing the behaviors that we want others to take on in order for to promote that. So that when they emulate us, we have a learning culture. So just a, a little bit more color on that. Yeah. But to your point about diverse perspectives, uh, I've learned so much about, uh, and I, I'm still in a learning journey, right? To to just, um, w- one thing I've learned that, that is, is really helpful to me is that Whenever I make an assumption about what, what's in anybody else's mind, I'm usually wrong. And often we look at somebody and we make assumptions. And, um, and so trying to uncover like how somebody is thinking and where they're coming from and how they're perceiving us and what the effect of our actions is on them, um, is, is in general, like really, really helpful. Uh, and when people have different uh, backgrounds, like whether it is gender or race or culture, or uh, they're coming from a different country language, they tend to have have had a, a sometimes like often a very different experience than 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 I have had. And and I when I make assumptions about what they're thinking, I'm kind of projecting my experience into their situation. I'm thinking if I were in this situation, this is how I would be thinking. And I can't really like, they're not, they don't have my history. They have a different history. And so they have different experiences. And so, um, and so in, in, um, in giving other people a voice and, and having me learn from them, uh, I just learned so much about uh, the different experiences people have, the different challenges they've been going through. And it equips me to better, to be a better leader, to be a better colleague and to better serve customers. Because also the customers who are coming through the doors uh, are, have a diversity of backgrounds, right? So the more that I understand how different people think and the different backgrounds that they come from, then the better a- able that I am uh, to serve them. So those are some thoughts on that. Yeah, I love that. I love um, kind of the learning journey and not projecting kind of um, your perspective onto other people's reality. Um, I think it's it's really kind of um, slowing down a little bit in those moments. Um, I think you you learn a lot together. So um, yeah, and there are partners like you know in in meetings where there's different genders and different races. Uh, often the you know, white males are speaking a lot. And a lot of the time, like if you look at just the statistics of how much the white males speak versus other people is a lot, lot more time. Um, uh, we, we cut off other people much more often. We, we repeat what they say. So when they share an idea, uh, we unconsciously, you know, not meaning badly, um, we, we tend to, think that we know better and that we have to judge whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. And if it's a good idea, then we have to repeat it to other people because now that we're going to say the idea, then other people are going to listen. Like, like, you know, this person doesn't really know, but now, you know, actually that's a good idea. And I'm going to say it again because it is a good idea. And so there's, there's like stuff like that, that, um, that I've uncovered over time and that I continue to uncover that, 
I think it's a never ending journey. Well, Eduardo, this has been um, fantastic. I, I've really enjoyed the conversation today. I already gave you my takeaway, Danny. Danny, what's your biggest takeaway, I think, from our um, conversation today? Gosh, so much. I think one of the things that really sticks out is that it's just a long-term commitment. Growing your mindset, it happens a little bit every day. You know, I think like my human nature for something like this is to be like, okay, I'm going to become the most amazing growth mindset. Everything's going to be a growth mindset. Um, and I think like you said, how we, how we kicked off the podcast, Eduardo is just pick something, pick one thing that you, this is right now is what I'm working on. Remind yourself about it every day, make it practical. There's so much technology that we could surround ourselves with. That is just a quick reminder to, to remember um, either something that you want to identify um, that you're going through your day and say, Oh no, man, this was a little bit of a fixed mindset or just something you want to improve on. So I, I love it. I enjoy well, seeing you with both of you, Nick and Danny. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the conversation. Yeah. And where can our listeners find you if they want to um, learn more and, and kind of learn more from you, I think. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, if they Google me, they'll find me on LinkedIn and Twitter and uh, my website is wiringgrowth.com. Well, great. Well, Eduardo, this has been fantastic. If you like today's episode, be sure to like it, share it with your friends, and then um, don't forget to shoot us a note about other topics you may be interested in. And thank you again for your time, Eduardo. Thank you both. Have a great day.